you guys give me the next 10 minutes of your time, I'm going to show you guys how you can use ChatGB Canvas to copy this code, paste it into the Pine Editor. Then with the updated strategy, you're going to see I'm able to get a net profit of $80,000 and have my own custom indicator built by GPT-40 with Canvas. So make sure you're on ChatGPT-40 with Canvas. If you don't have GPT-40 Premium, this is what you'll need. So um, I'm going to say, can you create a trading bot in Pine Script and ChatGPT with Canvas is important because if you're coding anything in ChatGPT 4.0, this is what you're going to want to need. So you basically you say, can you create a trading bot in PineScript that uses the RSI for buy and sell signals? But also what we want to do is we want to be a little bit more specific. So whatever asset we're going to be using, we want to make sure that we have the timeframes for that asset. So for example, if it's crypto, you want to put the crypto. If it's uh, you know a stock, you want to put the stock. And you also want to include the time frame. So if, because I'm doing a crypto, I'm going to put um, can uh, make this for Bitcoin. And then basically, I've already got one on here. And this is not exactly the one I want because this buy and sell signal. In fact, I mean, you can see some of the buy and sell signals. I mean, it's pretty weird. But um, basically, uh, you can see that you can switch between eight hour, four hour, three hour. I think four hours really good but sometimes it does give you too much. You can always switch, but basically I'm going to say four hours. So I'm going to put it, um, can you give, can you do it for the four hour time frame? Okay. And then I'm just going to click enter. Okay. Now, because this is in 4.0 with Canvas, this should pop up and you can see right here, this uh, is coding it and this should work. Okay. So we've got the RSI trading bot. In fact, I don't need to do that. I just go top right. And then all I do is I press copy. Then I swap back over to here and then I go to the Pine editor. Anything that I already have here, I have, I had a previous strategy here. That's why you're seeing all of this weird stuff on the chart. Um, I'm going to paste it in and then I'm going to click update on chart. Um, and then this one, okay, this one is weird. Okay. So um, let me just copy this. Uh, let me see what three problems they have. So it does have a problem here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste this back in. And because this is line two, I'm going to go to line two and I'm going to just say, just copy this exact thing. So I'm going to go to line two here and then I'm just going to literally ask ChatGPT, edit or explain. And I just pasted the exact thing that we had at line two. And then I'm going to just paste that. Then you'll see ChatGPT go through it and it will basically change that thing. It'll just double check. Okay, so now um, I'm going to just copy this. Just, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to copy this now. Now let's see if uh, this actually works. So I updated this on the chart. Then you can see right there we have our trades. Okay, so right there we have our buy and sell signals. You can see that it. Uh, this one is not the best. Of course, it's not that complex at all, but it gives us 44 closed trades. It says net profit $4,000, 65% profitable, which is pretty decently profitable. And it gives us a max drawdown of 50K USD. So I'm sure this is something that you probably might not want because um basically what it does is it gives you all of the trades and i think maybe this would maybe this works a bit better on the daily time frame so i think i want i'm gonna ask it to change it to the daily time frame because i still have i don't know why my previous trading strategy is still indicating so in fact if i actually just delete that it will give you the buy and sell signal so now you can see on the four hourly I can see signals that are buy, buy, sell, sell. So I can see overall it's buying at points where it shouldn't and it's selling at points where it shouldn't. So this is where it comes into refining the strategy. So I'm going to switch timeframes. I'm going to just see when the best time frame is. So if I'm looking through this, that would be accurate. That would be accurate. Um, That would be accurate. That would be accurate. And we're just going to keep going. And I think what I'm going to do is I think maybe the daily might even be better. So yeah, the daily looks pretty good because the buys and sells here I think these look the best, like the sells here are pretty decent. The buys here, pretty decent. Uh, this doesn't look bad. So I think I would, I would keep this, but let me just do it again. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to say, um, make it specifically for the daily chart. I don't want it triggered too many times, mainly when the RSI is overextended. Okay. So I'm going to say, uh, just, just do that change. So now it's going to do another over change because previously what I saw was that the RSI, it was being indicated way too much, too much times. And basically that was just, um, you know, doing over trading. Um, and ideally RSI trading is just the basic of the most basic trading thing that you could ever possibly have, which is why I said that one. So I'm going to try and do another one in a moment. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. And then I'm going to do update on chart and let's see if there's any issues. There shouldn't be, but, um, let me go ahead and see. So now if I go to the strategy tester, let me see if it, uh, if, if it changed. You can see that this one is actually a little bit more profitable. You can see that overall the net profit is at 21,000, but the max drawdowns also at 20,000. So that one's kind of like breaking even, you know, it says the average trade value um, percent profitable, 75%. Uh, profit factor. So this one is 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 pretty pretty decent. Okay, like this one is um. If I see drawdown, 
um, sometime in drawdown. But you can see that this one basically, uh, it says foreclosed trades, net profit 21K, max profit, max drawdown. I mean, performance summary, um, we can see, we can look down list of trades. Um, let's go down. Can I make this a bit bigger? We can actually see the trades it took. And you can see the first trade it took, uh, it took some when in profit. Um, and this one, I think, I don't know, it's kind of confusing to look at, but we can see that this one was basically break even. We can see that from a million dollars, it had a max drawdown of uh, $20,000, which is pretty crazy. So you can see that over time, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to continue to iterate with this. So what I could do now is I could probably say, hmm, okay, how could I make this even better? Um, because I want to make sure that this is, a uh, you know, um, something that just doesn't is based off the RSI because the RSI is only one indicator. So what I could do is I could look at, um, the 21 SMA. So this is like something that is, uh, you know, widely used in crypto. So for example, I could say when it's also beneath the, uh, 21 SMA indicate a buy signal, potentially what I could do, or I could do like, a you know, something that's when it's extended on the 99 SMA. I mean, there's a million different things that I could do here. But the point is, is that as long as you can experiment with these models, you're going to be able to find something that does work. So we can see here that like, um, if I can go on um, different areas, we're going to be able to see a lot more. So I'm thinking, what else could I add? So for example, like I said before, we could add the 99 SMA. I don't really like moving averages because um, they just, I don't know, they're just not that great. But what I could do is I could say, um, let's say, um, only do buys when the, the OBV is a uh, bullish or uh, bearish. So for example, OBV is something that I use quite a lot. It's probably one of the best indicators that there is. So for example, what I can do now is I can, um, I can say, and by the way, for those of you guys who might be confused before you make any changes and you think, okay, I really want that previous script that we just made. You can go back here and you can uh, view previous versions. So if you see the top right, you can click backwards, you can click forwards, and it's basically going to give you every single version that you can get if you really want to. So, um, what I could do here is I could say, okay, now code me a Bollinger bands strategy for Bitcoin. Okay. I'm just going to say code me a Bollinger bands one. Um, and basically this is just going to, you know, do it on the daily time frame. And so this is basically a different kind of time frame because this one allows you to look at the Bollinger bands. And this is basically trading once again, quite like the RSI, but within a certain price range. So I haven't done this one before, but I'm pretty sure this should work. So I'm going to go to the Pine editor again, put this in, update on chart. Let's do this one more time. And then um, this should give me some buy and sell signals, although I am not seeing them at the moment. But here we go. Okay, so you can see right here that the Bollinger Bands, I mean, these Bollinger Bands are a bit weird, but I'm guessing it's giving me buy and sell signals. So these ones should be a bit more accurate. But if we go to the strategy tester, we should be able to see the performance summary. This one actually isn't as good. Like I said before, you can iterate with how it works, of course, on the daily. Um, it's not going to be as good because Bollinger Bands, it, it usually works on volatility. And the thing is with uh, the daily time frame, there's not as much volatility. So I think if I go to something like maybe even the 10 minute time frame, um, in fact, this one's way worse. This is this is uh, too many signals. So I'm going to ask it for a much more shorter time frame. So I'm going to say, give me one based on a shorter time frame, like the 15 minute chart and highly volatile conditions. I don't want too many signals. Okay. So now when we do that, all we have to do now is just wait again and it's just going to update. So ideally with what you want to do here, there genuinely isn't a one size fits all strategy. With any trading, there's always going to be like certain areas where it works or it doesn't work. And the point with this is that there's always going to be areas where I think you're going to have to understand that, you know, you can obviously use things that are public, but you can always, you know, change them and adjust them to your own specifications. So for example, like I said before, I decided to change this one to one that's on the 10 minute chart. You can see that this one looks a little bit better, but we can see that in this area, you know, the price action, I mean, it was just right there. You can see that the price action, I mean, I just want it to stick on the chart. We can see that this one doesn't look too bad, but on Strategy Chester, it said this one didn't generate any orders through the chesting range. So it's probably going to have to uh, redo this again because there weren't enough orders. So I'm just going to say this one didn't generate any orders. So now it's just going to, once again, change all of this code again. And then we're going to go back and it's going to give us this one more time. So let's do this one more time. So now I've just updated this on the chart. Hopefully I do get some orders. Okay, this one didn't give me any orders either. I mean, let me go on the five minute chart. Then of course you can see here that all this is doing is this is just literally just adjusting the, the multiplier to um, from 2.5 to 2. So basically it's just increasing the range at which it's going to go. So all you have to do is of course update it one more time. So I'm on the 15 minute chart and this is one where we did get one. You can see that this one, it doesn't seem too profitable to be honest with you guys, 
But um, the point is, is that I don't really like Bollinger Bands and that stuff. I like to use RSI, OBV. Those are my personal indicators. But you can see here that it is completely up to you what kinds of things you do want. And of course, with this, when you're testing the strategy, this is based on certain market conditions. You can see that on certain charts, it's different time frames. It works better than others. So for example, this right now is the five minute time frame. So because it's the five minute time frame, you can see that this one was in profit. But if I switch to the 10 minute time frame, you can see that this one is negative. If I go to the three minute time frame, and uh, the net profit is negative. If I go to the two minute time frame, this one is a little bit more in profit, but you can see the max drawdown is there. Then we go to the one minute time frame, and you can see that's there. Um, we can go to the 30 minute time frame. This one's more in profit. So what you can do is you can just test and um, basically look at which the conditions are because right now if we take a look at the crypto market you could say that in fact let me just we can basically understand that however whatever's on your screen right now that is the time frame for which it's going to basically do the trades for so only this period in time so it's important to also understand that and understand that when you're switching your time frames the profitability is going to vary so bear that in mind the, the the longer the time frame is the more less responsive you want it to be and the shorter the time frame is, the more orders you want it to do because, you know, it's short, it's volatile. You are, you really want to understand quick buys and sells. You're not really like banking on the entire market, you know, changing its direction. But yeah, if you guys did find this tutorial really helpful, I think that ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas is probably the best thing ever right now because this just works seamlessly. And if you have any questions like you want me to share the chat, I will. And I'll see you guys in the next